Okay, so I wanted to talk tonight about no hollow threats. Mamas, daddies, you know what I'm talking about. And sorry for my appearance. I, we've been spring cleaning early. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. Not sorry. This is just me. So um, anyway, when I was growing up, there were, um, my dad, there were never any hollow threats in my house. If my dad said, if you do that again, this is going to happen. It always happened. And I waited till I was 39 to have kids. And I can't tell you, I love my friends. I do. And I love strangers. I love pretty much everybody. But God dang people, <laughs> if you tell your kids, if you do this, you're going to get a consequence. Follow through on the consequence. This is why kids are walking all over people and walking all over their parents. I want to raise kids that grow up to be adults that people want to be around. And I tell my kids that. I'm like, look, I don't mean to be hard on you, but I want you to have friends when you grow up. I want you to have friends now. Um, and I want other parents when you're at their home um, to not wish you weren't there, simply. So um, basically, so when I was growing up, I can remember a couple of times <laughs> they were pretty, um, they're funny now, but I hated my dad. I thought he was had ruined my life <clears throat> because he told me if I snuck out of the house again, I was a little bit rebellious. Um, that I was not going to go to homecoming and I already had my dress, had my date, had everything going to homecoming and, uh, snuck out again with a friend of mine and, uh, to go, <laughs> that was not the night. That's another story. Anyway, I'll share that with you later. That's hilarious. Um, I snuck out again and got caught and my dad made me sit in my bedroom with my dress hanging on the back of my door no, listen kids, no TV, no video games, no phone, no, I had not I had a radio and I wouldn't want to turn it on. So I had to sit in my room and stare at that goddamn dress while all my friends were at homecoming and sat there alternating between fuming and bawling and sure that he had ruined my life forever, like ruined it. Um, and he didn't, I'm fine. But um, that night I was sure of it. But you know what, when my dad said, if you do this, this is going to happen. It always happened. It always happened. And it, even just, and he could do it without even having to tell you. Like, you know, the look you would get from your, when you're sitting at a, like at dinner and you get that look and you're like, oh God. Um, I don't know if kids get that look anymore. My kids get that look. Um, I remember another time my brother and I, we were, I don't know, maybe eight and 10, but we were latchkey kids. So, you know, we came home and nobody was home for two or three hours. And so we climbed over the back gate and came in the back door and had a snack and then went out and played. Well, this one time it was, I don't know, raining, cold. We were staying inside for some reason. And my brother and I were fighting and did the unthinkable. I called my dad. And so I'm on one phone hooked to the wall and my brother's on the other phone hooked to the wall because he's arguing. And so we called my dad at work and said, and I told him, I said, Michael threw an iron at me, like an iron. It wasn't hot, but it was a goddamn iron. And he threw the iron at me and he screams on the phone, well, she threw a phone book at me. And I'm like, a phone book? That's not an iron. And the phone went dead, dead. Like you kids don't know what a dial tone is, but it's horrifying when it happens and your dad's on the other side. So we just stood there frozen, like terrified. And I don't know, less than five minutes, my dad had been work five minutes away. We hear him peel into the driveway, burst through the door, whipped both our butts, and walked back out the door and went back to work. He never said one word. He never said one word to either one of us. And I was like, well, hell's bells. We're never doing that again. So we made a truce that we would not throw things at each other. And for damn sure, we were going to call our dad. So... Anyway, we knew after that, you know, consequences, guys. So with my kids, I've been doing the same thing because I think I think it's important. I, I, they're not the boss, you know? I mean, they're born into this family. They aren't the boss. So do, too many kids nowadays, I think, are the boss. Um, but like uh, one time, my kids will be able to tell these stories. Brad and I paid for $65.00 to the school for parents night out, like date night. And 
the kids get to wear their jammies and go spend spend the evening, not the night, spend the evening for a few hours in the library with a couple of the teachers um, and all their friends eating pizza and watching movies and popcorn and playing games. And they look forward to it. We look forward to it because we had a few hours of, to ourselves to go have date night. So it was great. So we paid the, the $65. <laughs> I'm in the shower getting ready. Brad's on his way home and the kids are fighting. And they're like, I don't know, six and eight something like that seven and nine maybe and they're fighting in the bathroom where I'm showering like could you be any less smart like go somewhere else and fight whatever but they're fighting in the bathroom and I open the shower and I was like look if you argue again I, this is your one chance you get one chance I'm done I'm over it I'm over it you do it one more time no parents died out we will not go we'll stay home I don't care we'll stay home I can watch a movie at home order a pizza and I no more had shut the glass door to the shower that it started again. Like screaming, throwing things. And I was like, that's it. Go put your jammies on. We're staying home. And their little faces, they're like, we're already in jammies. We're going to parents' night out. And I'm like, no, you're not. We're staying home. And they thought I was bluffing. And when Brad got home, he, of course, thought I was nuts. And I said, no. We're not going. And he's like, what about the $65? I'm like, screw the $65. This lesson is worth more than $65. They're staying home. Nobody's going. Consider it a donation. Stay at home. And we stayed home. And we had date night in our bedroom and made them go to bed. So since then, if I say, if you do that again, we're not going to the movie. I know we have tickets. But you know I'm not bluffing. We won't go to the movie. Or I'll get a sitter. And we'll go to the movie without you. But you're not going to the movie. Miles, some pharmacist, God bless her, when he was throwing a fit, I was having to hog time for a flu shot at nine years old. Um, actually, a video of that. He, the woman came in and said, you know, do you want to, I'll give you a Snickers. And I'm like, get out of here with yours. Give me the Snickers. I'm the one working over here. I'm not, he's not getting a Snickers for this behavior. And he had, I had told him if he was real, if you just sit down and take the shot and we'll go get ice cream sandwiches. Yes. Nope. I had to hold him down. Did he get the shot? Yes, he did. Did he behave? Did he get the, at the end? I said, you know who's getting ice cream sandwiches today? Not you. That's who. And we did not get ice cream sandwiches because I'm not going to reward bad behavior. I think it's a poor, poor, poor precedent. Um, so anyway, and another thing I did, and this may be controversial, but I don't care. Not sorry. Um, when my kids were really little, like two, and you try to tell them, don't do this. I'm going to count to three. Oh my God. 39 years. I walked through stores with women going two and a half, two and three quarters. And I was like, oh my gosh, let me have the kid. Just let me have the kid for one minute. These kids. So I was like, I will never do that. I will never get pushed to three in public, never. So in my sick mind, my kids too, she's just starting to assert herself. Miles was born and she was getting, you know, uh, and three is really when it gets bad. People that say terrible twos never had a three-year-old. Three is awful um, because they are asserting themselves. And I told her at two and a half, three, I said, if you do it again, I'm gonna pop your butt. Now, she had a pull up on. Did I hurt my child? Never. Never, ever, 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 ever would I hurt my child. But it was enough to shock her. So I said, I will do it if you do that again. Because I don't want you getting hurt. Don't put your hand on there again. And she didn't believe me. And I said, I'm going to I mean, you tried negotiating with a two-year-old. It's easier to negotiate with terrorists than a two-year-old. And that's a true statement. So I said, one. And she, she did it again. And on two, I, I popped her little pamper right when I said two. On two, I popped her. And Brad was like, what's wrong with you? You said three. And I was like, exactly. I'm never, ever going to get pushed to three. Ever. Ne never. Never getting pushed to three. You know why? Because I'm going to pop them on two. So I would tell them I was going to count to three, but on two, I'd just pop the little honeys. And I never hurt my kids. I've also never had to do that since they were four years old. Never. Because they know on two, it's coming. Whether we're on the soccer field, in church, it doesn't matter where we are, it's coming. So now, to this day, I can say, Davenport's, it's time to go. Davenport's, it's time to go. 
And then if they're not coming, I say one and immediately these little heads pop up and they come running because they're like, God dang, she's going to pop me in front of my friends. And I would, but I don't have to because I got my bluff in early ladies and I didn't have any hollow threats, no hollow threats. I, I cannot complain. And my kids are not perfect, but I think they mind amazingly well. Not always, but there are consequences when they don't. And I think they're going to grow up to be better adults because of it. And I think they're going to be adults that other adults would like to be around. And that is my goal. So that was my little bit of advice today. I'll take it or leave it. <laughs> Have a good one.